The software industry provides some of the most attractive career paths today. About half the people working in this field make over $100,000. And if you happen to live in one of the places like Silicon Valley, the Bay Area, or New York City, you can make far more than that. The growth rates for some of these roles are nuts. 31%, 22%, 15% are some of the rate increases that you will see in this industry. There are so many different job types and career avenues that you can go down in the software industry. And with nearly 30,000 computer science degrees awarded per year in the United States alone, there are so many different job avenues and categories that you can pursue for your career. So in this video, we're talking about the top 12 jobs for software, computer science, and developer professionals, and we're starting right now. Hey guys, Jake here. If you're interested in engineering career and job success, make sure you subscribe. All the data in this video is backed by an Indeed jobs report from late 2020 and some of the job postings from right now in spring of 2021. And the salaries in this video are national, not just to the Bay Area. Let's get right started with job type number one, which is a data scientist. Data scientists work for corporations to help them establish a software system or network from which to gather important data about company financials, sales, or marketing techniques. This allows companies to weigh the success of a campaign or compare quarterly sales. Data scientists generally have a bachelor's degree in computer science and probably a master's degree as well. Data science is an interdisciplinary approach for extracting information out of data in order to make better decisions. Data science is growing by almost 80% per year. And with a salary at $128,000 and about 15,000 job openings right now, this is definitely an A-tier job option for software engineers and professionals. Next up, we have a full stack developer. Full stack developers use their knowledge of front and back end development to create back end coding and visual designs for websites and platforms. They may also be responsible for creating mobile applications for the websites they create. Full stack developers need a bachelor's degree in computer science Science, software development, or computer programming. They should also have advanced knowledge in a variety of coding languages, including Python, JavaScript, and CSS. Full stack developers are growing at over 200% per year, which means the industry is tripling the amount of full stack developers every single year. Focus on the front end, get your first job, and then when you've mastered that, then start learning the back and you can do the whole thing. And with an average salary of $113,000, 24,000 job postings, it's not the best salary on this list, but there are enough available jobs and with such a fast growth rate, about the third in the nation right now, this is a combination of an A and a B tier option. So that's what it is for full stack developers. Number three on this list is a software engineering role. Software engineers use their knowledge of coding and applications to create software for companies. Generally, they create software programs, mobile applications, and communication channels or content management systems that are specific to a company and its needs. Software engineers should have great communication skills to be able to work with clients to establish those needs. To become a software engineer, you need a bachelor's degree in software engineering or development, computer science, or computer programming. Now, after doing the PR changes, I go back to Jira and move my task around and start 4212. I'm going to implement a camera scanner for Android and iOS. It is like a barcode scanner. Now for this, I'm going to research which library is better, whether it's ZXing or ZBot. The average national salary for software engineers is $109,000. And if you work in an industry like the Bay Area, your base starting salary could be something like $130,000 to $150,000. And that doesn't even include a 20% signing bonus, which is normal, and even some restricted stock units, which could be another 20 to 30% in terms of total value for your compensation. So some starting positions in San Francisco, over $200,000 in total value, not to mention health benefits and other things. But the average national salary is $109,000. And there's 130,000 job postings open right now on Indeed. It's super fast growing software developers in general, not just engineers, but the whole category is growing by about 22% per year. So because the salary is pretty good and there are so many possible job options, this is our first S tier job category for software professionals. 
Okay, next up we have a site reliability engineer. Site reliability engineers communicate between development operation engineers and software engineers to address potential website errors or confusing messaging that could affect its effectiveness to the user. They use coding libraries from DevOps engineers and the designing capabilities of software engineers to make necessary changes to the website or platform's makeup. To become a site reliability engineer, you should have a bachelor's degree in an area like software development, information systems management, or computer programming. In addition, you should also have a few years of experience working as a software developer, systems engineer, or a related area. I have overall responsibility for making sure that the projects that I work on stay up, they're quick to respond, they are cheap to run, they're easy to repair, you can very simply expand them. The average salary for site reliability engineers is pretty good at $128,000, but there are not that many job openings, just under $1,800. So despite a pretty good salary, this is going to be our first C tier job category for software professionals. Job option number five is a mobile developer. Mobile developers are responsible for designing mobile applications. They may be required to restructure company websites to fit a mobile format or create an app or video game. They can work specifically for corporations or as sole proprietors in listing their services to others. To become a mobile developer, you should have a bachelor's degree in information technology, computer programming, information systems management, computer science, or related area. So one of the things I have to do every day is to check the pull request. It will launch my simulator in this case. So in our testing app, we have some fake vehicles to test that the whole flow of our app is working properly. What I'm doing now is debugging this code to make sure that I didn't do anything wrong. In order to do this, you probably need experience in the IT industry in general. The average national salary is $125,000 a year, and there's about 17,000 job openings on Indeed right now. So this is an A-tier job option for software professionals. Next up, we have a data warehouse architect. Data warehouse architects work with corporations to create and design data warehouses, which are large storage management systems that allow companies to store data regarding analytics. They are also responsible for assessing the types of data that a company uses to determine what to include in a data warehouse, like employee contact details, files, financial statements, or customer complaints. Data warehouse architects should have a bachelor's degree in computer programming, computer engineering, software engineering, or information systems. On Azure, the modern data warehouse is a solution pattern that really empowers you to perform any analytics, ranging from SQL queries to advanced machine learning, without having to compromise on the fidelity of your data or over-provisioning wasted compute resources. This is the second highest salary on this list at $134,000 for an average data warehouse architect. And there's over 7,000 job openings on Indeed right now. So this is another S tier job option for software professionals. Next up, we have a cloud engineer. A cloud engineer is responsible for helping a corporation move their IT methods to a cloud format. This is to ensure they don't lose important company information information. Cloud engineers work to ensure that a company's cloud management system stays secure and updated so it backs up information consistently. To become a cloud engineer, you need to earn a bachelor's degree in an area like information technology, computer science, or cybersecurity. I actually work with customers' environments, uh, everything from architecting their environments and helping guide them in best practices on that to troubleshooting their environments. You usually need at least three years of experience to be eligible for cloud engineer positions. The salary of a cloud engineers is pretty good at $120,000 a year and there's almost 67,000 positions open on Indeed right now which is the third highest on this list so this is an A tier option for software professionals. Next up number eight on the list we have a development operations engineer or a DevOps engineer. DevOps engineers work within corporations or IT firms to compile code libraries or databases for each new system or software program created. This allows future employees to refer to the library to identify what certain codes represent should they need to update the system. Development operations engineers need a bachelor's degree in an area like information systems management, computer programming, or computer science. They will also benefit from having previously been a coder or network administrator. The average salary is $127,000 a year, and with just over 7,000 job openings on Indeed, this is a 
B tier job option. Next up, we have an IT security specialist. IT security specialists are responsible for working with corporations to develop guidelines for cybersecurity within the company's software programs and communication channels. To do this, they review the company's current cybersecurity standards and review the IT department's procedures. IT security specialist candidates should have a bachelor's degree in information technology, computer science, cybersecurity, or a related area. That's one thing to think about how do I secure myself, or then how do I secure my family members or my friends at different levels of technical expertise. But then you think about, you know, there could be people from different cultures, or maybe they're using a device that has very little memory, and how do you make the best use of that memory to secure them. The salary is one of the lower ones on this list at $106,000 a year. And with only 1,400 job openings on Indeed, this is a C tier job option as IT security specialist. Number 10 on the list is an enterprise architect. An enterprise architect works for a corporation to ensure their technological processes benefit their business goals. Therefore, this role requires both business and IT skills. Based on their analysis of their company's business goals, they set IT standards, purchase software, or enlist the help of the IT department to create it. To become an enterprise architect, you should have a bachelor's degree in computer science, business administration, or information technology. Enterprise architecture is about three things. We take a look at the existing situation. We help to develop and evaluate designs. And we create a sketch for the future so that everyone understands the direction we're heading. This type of career is a nice intersection of business and computer science, business and tech. So it's very attractive. It also pays really well. The salary is the highest on this list at $140,000 for a national average, but there's only 2,200 job openings on Indeed right now. So this is an S slash A tier job option. Number 11 on this list is a system engineer. A system engineer works for IT firms or corporate Operations to install software programs for networks and databases. They also need to be able to help maintain the system and make repairs to ensure security measures work. To become a system engineer, you need to have at least a bachelor's degree in information technology, computer science, or a related field. This is the lowest salary on the list at $102,000, but there's almost 190,000 job openings for system engineer on Indeed if you search that category. Mostly because there's so many job openings and you have the ability to niche down and become special in your industry. So you can really get a higher salary from that average of $102,000. This is an A tier job option. Okay, the grand finale, number 12, last on this list, but certainly not least, is a software architect. Software architects are responsible for using their expert knowledge of software development to oversee a team of IT professionals, including software developers. They delegate tasks related to software programming creation, maintenance, and updates so that the company or client they work for receives top tier software as a result. Software architects typically have a bachelor's degree in computer programming, software engineering, or development of information systems management. Software architects make $138,000 a year, almost the highest on this list for a national average, and there's 23,000 openings on Indeed right now. So this role is an S tier job option for software professionals. So there we have our top 12 jobs for software professionals. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it a like. And if you're a young professional in the engineering realm, and you want to be at the top of your career, make sure you subscribe. Let me know what type of software individual you are trying to be and what type of software engineering or computer science types of videos that I should make next. Comment below with any engineering question. I respond to every single comment. We have over 140 videos on this show. So check out another video and we'll see you there. Bye bye.